A win over the Saints is always going to be good in my book. It's always going to be a good day. Great. It's a great day. And I would rather take an ugly win than a pretty loss. That's wins and losses. It's the only thing that matters. We're going to talk about the game here and kind of see what we think about how the Falcons play. Then we're going to cover every other NFL game as well. Give ourselves uh, some opinions on some of that stuff. So uh, we scored uh, zero offensive touchdowns and one. That doesn't sound great, but there are some positives to take away from it. We're going to cover that right here. Saints. GG's. 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 Game's over. Game's over. No need to be mean. No need to be hateful at this point. We're up in the series. We beat you. Let's just talk real, honest. No clickbaits. No trolling. Football opinion on the game because I think the Saints actually did a lot of things really well in this game. And uh, we probably got a little fortunate to come away with this one. All right, so a 26-24 uh, win on a really long field goal by Koo. Uh, so let's just start from the beginning, obviously. A muffed punt for a touchdown is really, really rare. A tipped interception for a pick six. Um, but a lot of the other things that I, I did not really like that we did. Again, a lot of the play calling, the drive at the end of the game to get into the field goal range, which we got there because of a pass interference, and then followed up by three bad decisions. You would like to just try to get closer. Even though he, who made it, you still want to get closer, right? I don't want to take my chances on him making 57, 58 yard field goals, which is or more than his career long, uh, very consistently. So that was still very poor. Uh, Bijan not getting the ball enough. Uh, again, like a game you were fairly in control of for the most part, score wise, seven carries, like seven carries is, is, is not great. Uh, the saints ran the ball fairly well. Uh, Taysom Hill going down and getting hurt was actually pretty helpful. Um, would never wish injury on anyone, even the players we don't like, but it was, it was, it, it, it did sort of shift things because he is such a pain every time Atlanta plays him. He really is. He's fantastic against us. Uh, and again, no offensive touchdowns, a muffed punt, a tipped pick six. It just all didn't look really, really good at all. Uh, even some of the ways that we were able to move the ball, uh, Bijan should have had a touchdown, kind of a bad holding call. But again, if, if I'm going to review a single penalty and be like, that would have changed the game. It would only be fair to go talk about all the other penalties. So I don't really want to focus on the penalties here in this instance, because I'm sure there were other ones that had some pretty big impacts as well. So we're not going to focus on that. What happened happened. It's very clear to me that this offense is still not clicking and working correctly. You know, uh, we see here, Kyle Pitts, three targets, zero catches, kind of a problem, kind of a problem. I did like the balance elsewhere. I did. I, I, I like the balance elsewhere for sure. Uh, you knew Chris Olave was going to he always does well against us. I feel like Kamara always does well. Uh, but Rashid Shahid, playing in kind of an underneath role, really helped this team out uh, completely in there. So, again, I'm just happy to get away with the win here. It was an ugly win. Maybe didn't really fully deserve it. And you, you couldn't have watched this game and came away confident going into the Bucks game. I, it almost kind of like throws me off because if you told me we we're two and two and we beat the Saints, uh, I'd be pretty happy. And, and I'm not in a disappointed state, but I still don't know what the outlook looks like for this team. Right? I, I don't know. We've gotten zero production from rookies. Uh, Cousins hasn't looked fantastic. We've now had three games come down to final drives, right? I guess four technically. I, I guess the Pittsburgh game did when he threw a pick. Um, 
I don't want to live. You know what I want? I want a comfortable win at some point this season. Can we get to that point? Uh, I would kind of give us like a C grade overall. Again, Troy Anderson, who had the pick six, he got hurt as well. So how does this team look going into Tampa? You can't feel too good on a short week. How we're not playing great. The offense looks different every single week. Are, are we run heavy? Are we pass heavy? Are we pistol heavy? It's just, there's so much that's different. It's very clear Atlanta does not know their identity. That's a bit of a problem, but we'll take the win uh, for sure. Again, a division win against anyone is a good win. The Saints makes it a little bit sweeter, but it doesn't push a lot of confidence towards me. And I'm kind of, uh, I'm a little shocked we were actually the favorites in this game. But hey, I guess Vegas was right again. And, well, we didn't cover, so that sucks. With football season right around the corner, there's no better time to check out prize picks than today. To win, all you need to take is your sports knowledge into the app, pick more or less, and you can win up to 100 times your money. And every week we have specials, we have discounts, and we have Flex Friday, which is a protected lineup each and every week. And for new users right now, if you sign up using code CC, all you have to do is make your first deposit, play a lineup, and you will get $50 in credit instantly into your account. And to sign up, all you have to do is click the link in the description down below or go to the App Store. Either way, make sure you are using code CC when you sign up. And if you're unsure what you want to do in the lineups you want to play, feel free to follow me on Twitter, the actual CC. I post every lineup I play on there every single day. So it's time to check out Prize Picks, get winning, have some fun, boys. Let's get back to the video. Let's have a great day. Good luck on all your lineups. All right, let's talk about the rest of the games. Titans Dolphins was boring. You knew it was going to be boring. You knew it was going to be boring. Uh, all this Tua talk, right? Like Tua is obviously still not playing. And uh, very rarely is a backup quarterback going to be going to be as good or as efficient. They, they really can't do anything without him uh, at all. And so the Titans win in a terribly ugly game. It was gross. Uh, it's the Ox and Lions. Fun. That was a fun game, though. We got a fun one, at least. A little surprising with some of the stuff here. Um, what kind of threw me off about this game was still like the way that Detroit played a lot of the game, right? Even though Detroit was kind of in control, I feel like they kept letting Seattle like stay in the game where they could have sort of backed off a little bit. Uh, I understood them what they, uh, you know, the safety at the end of the game, how that happened. I, I know why they made that play call. It's something I think is a very smart play call. Just didn't work out. It's a hindsight thing. Uh, but you know, the Seahawks would eventually take an L. They've had kind of an easier schedule. Kind of an easier schedule. But we do not penalize that because you got to win those games. Bengals finally get their win. Uh, not surprising here. You, you can't be surprised that the Bengals beat the Panthers. Um, I think Panthers are kind of scrappy right now. So it is what it is. Uh, what do we got next? Broncos and Jets. You're like the Broncos have the best defense in the league, statistically. Kind of an odd thing. Um, kind of an odd thing. The Jets had all the chances in the world and just blew it. They just blew it. Uh, the Jags played a lot better in this game. The Texans are just a better team. Nico Collins is just destroying uh, right now. The Rams and the Bears. Again, this is one of those games the Bears should have won, and they did indeed win. They did win, right? The Rams are just decimated by injury. It happens. Caleb still got a long way to go. He's still got a long way to go. We're not going to punish a rookie quarterback uh, at all on how they're playing in that situation. Uh, Vikings. If you told me Jordan Love didn't play, I'd have been like, okay, that's fine. The Vikings probably win. Jordan Love plays, and they have to come back. They have to come back in this game. They almost do. They almost do. The Vikings are really uh, playing. I don't want to say they're really good. They're playing really, really well. They're playing really, really well. Again, when you have a big lead and you basically give it up, there are some signs for concern there. But they keep winning. Sam Darnold is playing very well. 
He is literally just throws the ball to whoever's open as well. That's a big thing. A big thing because he just doesn't care. Who's open? Who's open? Uh, Saints Falcons, we talked about. Bucks and Eagles, what is wrong with Philadelphia right now? I don't know. There's just something about them. Like, I, I, I know they're missing players. I get it. I get it, right? A two and two. I get it. They don't feel like a two and two team, really. They don't. But they beat who? Green Bay? Green Bay's not bad. Right? Green Bay's not bad. They beat the Saints. I don't think the Saints are bad. And this one here, again, just kind of ugly offense. Their, their offense was ugly in the Falcons game. Ugly in the Saints game. Ugly here. Again, what did we say? Saquon gets 10 carries. Did he get 10 carries? I know I saw the thing where he didn't touch the ball for like the first three drives. I... I'm not saying like if you gave Saquon the ball in those situations or if he had got like a big touchdown, like the game changes all that much, but I don't think it can hurt. I don't think it can hurt. Uh, Steelers and Colts. Wow. Wow. Am I the only one that thinks that the Steelers win this game if Anthony Richardson doesn't get hurt? Because like Joe Flacco... Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco might be a better quarterback right now than Anthony Richardson. I don't think that's a crazy statement. Also, don't necessarily want to put Richardson in the bust category. Like we said, he's still pretty young. He missed so much of his rookie year. I consider him still a rookie. And I, they won. They won. Congratulations. Uh, Patriots Niners. Even with the Patriots missing a bunch of people, this is. It's a complete mismatch. They did exactly what they needed to do. Now we get to this. I wanted to talk about this. Is How good is Jaden Daniels? How good is he? It's the scheme is playing out so, so well. You got to like it. I mean, they lost in week one. Three in a row now. Playing consistently. You can see and feel them getting better. We're like week one. It was like, oh, okay rookie you know week two oh they couldn't get in the end zone week three they did week four they did they're playing very well he's playing very well the scheme is working for him and he's working well within the scheme which is incredibly important having the right quarterback in the right scheme it's kind of like what i feel like some of the falcons problem is the scheme doesn't look as good in Kirk Cousins' hand as I think it would in Michael Penix's hand. That's just an assumption as well, but I don't know. The commanders are must-see right now, almost, or Jaden Daniels is. Uh, Raiders losing to the Browns. Again, the Browns just not that good, man. Just not that good. Not much you can say about that otherwise. Um, I don't think the Raiders are very good either. Whatever. Uh, Chiefs. They can't keep winning, right? They just can't. How do you lose Rasheed Rice? I don't know what they're going to do with that Rasheed Rice. They're obviously going to have to go get somebody in here. But if I'm a Chargers fan, you got to feel like this is one we probably should have had. One we should have had. We went up 10 nothing and then didn't do anything. The scary part about the Chiefs, if you've watched the Chiefs, their defense is really quite good. Right? They took J.K. Dobbins, who I'm pretty sure was leading the league in rushing, and did nothing. He did nothing. They couldn't do a whole lot in that game. Patrick Mahomes doesn't have to do as much as he used to. So how much will the Rasheed Rice, no Hollywood Brown, no Pacheco, that all really, really hurts. I think they can get away with it enough for playoff position in seeding, but I think if you really want to make a run, you got to have some better players. Well, I think they will. Uh, Baltimore. This is this is old school Baltimore. This was an old school Baltimore game. <laughs> what else do you say about it? Derrick Henry looked how you thought Derrick Henry would look. The Ravens started 0-2. 
Derrick Henry got like 14 and 15 carries in those two games. Right? You heard before this. We're not, we're not, we don't want to lean on Derrick Henry. Well, they start 0 and 2, and then they leaned on Derrick Henry the last two games, and he has done a fantastic job. If you're a Baltimore fan, this win feels really good. Any win feels good, but because you you took the lead, you held it, and you just kind of like kept on. Like Buffalo's a good team, right? Again, I feel like Buffalo's missing some pieces. I feel like they are. I don't know if they're a Super Bowl contender. They're a playoff team, very clearly. Josh Allen is a very good player, but it comes down to you got to have some people to make some plays. And you've got some, you know, Shakir's fine. Uh, Keon Coleman's a rookie. But then you start to throw some other people in here, and they're just not ultra dynamic type of players that you can consistently count on. So we'll see how that works. If Baltimore can play this style of football, play from ahead, if they can play from ahead, which they've done in three of the games, they just blew the lead in two of them, basically. You got to feel good if, if you're a Ravens fan. And then uh, Cowboys Giants. I'll say this, right? I do not think Daniel Jones is a, is a great NFL quarterback. But he's doing a pretty good job this year. You know, I think the Giants defense is good. I think I said that last week. Uh, Malik Neighbors, kind of, kind of a star in the making, right? But it's clear enough to me. Dallas had trouble with the run all year long. What did they say? They said, okay, let's make Daniel Jones beat us. Let's make Daniel Jones beat us and not let them run the ball. So that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. Now, you still couldn't cover Neighbors and Robinson. They were just everywhere. And Daniel Jones was kind of a check down merchant in the game. And that is totally fine. But you got to feel good if you're the Giants that, like, you have a base of a team. You may still be missing the quarterback, but you got a base of the team that is playing not completely terrible. Not completely terrible. Like, they haven't done. The worst. Dallas obviously needs to win. Dallas always beats the Giants, so that's no surprise there. But the Giants cover? <laughs> I mean, it was just because of a missed field goal, but the game was still close. The game was still close. I don't feel like anything that Dallas did was this overpoweringness uh, of it all, right? I just think they just played slightly better, and the score shows that they played slightly better. Dallas only scoring 20 against the Giants. It feels low. Feels low. Daniel Jones thrown for 280 yards in a very efficient way. And I believe he had the is it a Hail Mary interception essentially? Something like that. So not bad. Not bad. Uh was it was an interesting week. I think the NFL is in a really, really weird spot. Obviously, lots of people still injured. Vikings leading the way. The Chiefs not leading the way is not surprising. The whole NFC, I wouldn't be surprised if every single division leader we have so far changes by the end of the season. That means the Vikings. That means the Seahawks. That means the Buccaneers and the Commanders. It's an odd... You, you didn't have it. And it's still early. I think there's going to be a lot of flip-flopping going on there because I think those teams are still good teams and they should still be in contention especially someone like the Vikings who like their schedule has been not easy. Now the giants came. Okay. But they beat Houston, green Bay and San Francisco. They're winning the hard game and that's impressive. And that's why I think the Vikings can have a pretty good record. Still, I think they got to come down to earth at some point but winning those types of games. Uh, is really important. We're going to leave it on that. Again, we got Falcons Bucks on Thursday night. Don't feel too great going into the game, honestly. Um, I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm, I'm not worried about losing. I'm worried about losing badly. I'm worried about losing badly. We've kept every game really close, but I, I get like this random 31-13 feel that the Bucks win. 
I do. Love you guys. I'm out. Peace.